Hello and welcome to Keep the Bastards Honours, the podcast of the Australian Democrats. I'm your host, Alana Mitchell, and on this episode, welcome to our first bonus episode. My venerable co-host, Steve Beatty, has been overseas and unavailable for podcasting duties. So I thought I'd have a crack at a new type of episode that we've been planning. Ever wondered how something about Australian government or politics worked? Or saw a hot button topic on the news that you wanted to know more about? Along with our regular episodes, we're going to drop the occasional explainer episode into the mix to cover off random questions you either didn't know you had or you didn't know who to ask. Today's episode was inspired by teenage journalist and founder and chief anchor of Six News Australia, Leo Puglisi, who said, I hate this whole story about superannuation because it's forcing me to learn what superannuation is, and I suck at anything relating to numbers. And if your response to that was, same, Leo, same, then this episode is for you. I've done the research, so you don't have to, and I'm going to take you through what superannuation is, what on earth these tax breaks on super are, and whether they're going to impact you. Don't turn off the pod. I know you're probably thinking that you've got far more interesting and urgent things to do, like watching paint dry or grass grow. But if you're a younger person who knows nothing about super, or an older person who feels like they should know something about super but don't, this is a gap in your knowledge you really need to fill. And I'm going to do my absolute best to make it interesting for you. Okay, so before we start, I need to point out that I'm an IT business analyst. I'm not a financial planner or accountant or in any way qualified to give you financial advice. And this is not what this podcast is going to be about. So if you think you need some financial advice or assistance with your super, there's a ton of tools and services available to help you out. Put a few in the show notes. So for our younger listeners, what is super? According to the Australian Tax Office, superannuation or super is money put aside by your employer over your working life for you to live on when you retire from work. At the time of recording, employers are required to contribute 10.5% of your salary into a superannuation account on your behalf. This is done at the time you're paid, so you're saving without even noticing it leaving your hands. You also have the option of making your own contributions to your super account, separate to your employer's mandatory contributions. The earlier you can afford to do this, the better off you'll be, thanks to the magic of compounding interest. When superannuation was introduced in the 80s by the Hawke-Keating government, it was done to address a perceived demographic risk of our largest population cohort, the baby boomers, retiring en masse and putting unsustainable pressure on the social security system and the age pension. Super was introduced as mandatory savings to ensure everyone has some level of retirement income to either supplement the age pension or replace it completely when you retire. I'll let Shane Wright, a senior economics correspondent for the Sitting Morning Herald and The Age, explain why it's mandatory. Humans are terrible at making long-term financial decisions. History is resplendent with how bad we are at making long-term financial decisions. We make bad financial decisions that that impact us within two or three days. So think of buyer's regret, but getting to 65 or 67, which the retirement age now, and going, oh my God, I have no savings. I've spent it all. I'm going to be reliant on the age pension to get me through the next 20, 30 years. If you're under the age of 30, it's a really good idea to review your superannuation and make sure you've got your money in a super product that's suitable for you, like making sure your super is in an industry fund and not a retail fund. And that's not financial advice, that's stating a fact. One of the outcomes of the Hain Banking Royal Commission was the discovery that the worst performing industry fund is likely to be outperforming the best performing retail fund. It doesn't take very long to do the research necessary to find a good performing super fund with low fees to put your money into, but sacrificing a few hours on research now will make a world of difference when it's time for you to retire. If you're like me and you're over the age of 30, well, the same advice applies. It's never too late to review your super and make sure it's set up to maximise your retirement income. And there's tons of free tools and calculators available on the ATO website and the Money Smart website run by the Australian Securities and Investment Commission, which I've linked to in the show notes. Right, 
lecture on looking after your super over. Back to the reason why I started this episode in the first place, the change to superannuation that Labor's proposing. Over the last few weeks, the mainstream media have been beside themselves about what Labor's doing, which is changing the discounted tax treatment of income on super balances over $3 million from a tax rate of 15% to 30%. So what's going on here and will this affect your superannuation? Well, it's been estimated that this is going to impact around 80,000 people out of the roughly 14 million people who are of working age in Australia. The coalition has gone into bat for these 80,000 Australians who, according to them, have worked hard to squirrel away $3 million or more in their superannuation accounts. Now, Peter Dutton is carefully overlooking the inconvenient fact that if these people can afford to lock $3 million or more away in a retirement account that they can't access until they're 65, then they're quite likely to have considerably more investments and savings outside of their superannuation account, like shares or property or trust funds. You get the drift. It's very important to note that the balance of the account, i.e. $3 million, will not be taxed just the income or interest earned on that balance. Michael Pascoe of the New Daily has calculated that on average, the 80,000 people affected will be taxed an additional $7,500 a year on top of the 15% tax they're already paying. If you're wealthy enough to sequester $3 million or more in an account you can't touch until you retire, I think we can all agree that an extra few thousand dollars in tax isn't going to hurt too much. Now, you might think that a doubling of the tax rate that they're paying is possibly a little unfair, but keep in mind that if they were earning the kind of money that would enable them to have $3 million in their super account by the time they retire, they'd need to be earning more than $180,000 a year and they'd be paying 45% income tax on every dollar they earned above $180,000. So they're still getting a big discount on this income. It's just not as big as they were getting. Let me put into context for you the kind of money you'd need to be earning over your lifetime to get $3 million in super. Greg Jericho of The Guardian and the Australia Institute calculated that To get a super balance of $3 million, you'd need to earn $200,000 a year from ages 21 to 67 with 12% employer contributions and an extra $30,000 a year of voluntary contributions. How many 21-year-olds earning 200 grand a year do you know? So will this affect you? No. 99.5% of Australians will be completely unaffected by this change. And of the 0.5% who are affected... Well, you guys made out like bandits while it lasted. Take this one on the chin. And if you're wondering if $3 million to retire on was a lot of money, it is. It is an enormous amount of money in comparison to the average Australian super balance. According to KPMG, on average, women are retiring with a median superannuation balance of $146,900 compared to men who will walk away with $204,107 between the ages of 60 to 64. Now, those figures will increase as the baby boomers retire because the boomers started accruing super midway through their careers. And then you'll get Gen Xs and millennials coming through who have had super their entire careers. So that will push the median balance up. But it will take literally decades before we start seeing people with an average super balance of $3 million. Let's keep in mind that most of the 80,000 odd people who will be affected by this have more than $3 million in their super accounts. $3 million is just the threshold the Albanese government chose to apply for this change. It's estimated that one super account has over $500 million in it. That's over half a billion dollars paying 15% in tax on its earnings. I mean, that's obscene. Why is this tax change important? It's a very, very small step toward making our superannuation tax breaks and benefits fairer and more equitable. Superannuation tax concessions were originally introduced to encourage people to contribute to their retirement through voluntary contributions alongside the mandatory employer contributions. Think back to Greg Jericho's example where you'd have to earn 200 grand a year for most of your working life and still contribute $30,000 a year out of your own pocket 
to hit $3 million in super when you retire. He has a great explainer on how, over time, superannuation tax breaks have become a massive tax dodge that benefits the wealthiest Australians the most. The cost of the federal budget of the tax revenue foregone by these tax concessions is now almost as much as we spend on the age pension that super was supposed to replace or supplement. That's $50 billion a year, by the way, and 40% of that goes to the top 10% of wage earners. The Australia Institute has calculated that for the cost of the current superannuation tax concessions, we could increase the age pension by 20% and make it universal, i.e. everyone gets a pension at retirement age, regardless of their circumstances, and still have billions of dollars left over. And the Australia Institute, back about 10 years ago, did a paper where we looked at superannuation tax concessions and the age pension. And we worked out you could increase the age pension by 20%. You could make it universal. So everybody got one at the age of 67 when they retired or whatever the retirement age was. So everybody from the poorest person to to the richest person, Gina Reinhart would get a full age pension, 20% larger than now. And you would still have tens of billions of dollars left over after you did that if you got rid of, you funded it by getting rid of all of superannuation tax concessions. So we can give everybody a universal age pension and still save money simply because superannuation tax concessions are so large. That's just how enormous they are. Yep. Wow. Another interesting question here is why do you need big tax concessions for something that's compulsory for most of us? Mm, Good point. This is just the tip of the iceberg and all the tax breaks, exemptions, discounts, concessions, and other, nah, I won't call them rorts because they're legal and the people benefiting from them aren't doing anything wrong. Whether or not they should have been legislated is a discussion for another podcast. But the point I'm trying to arrive at is that every dollar foregone in tax revenue is a dollar that we can't spend on hospitals, education, aged care, childcare, or on submarines, if a strong defence is your thing, or raising the rate of social security payments to the poverty line. And the government is currently foregoing a lot of tax revenue, with more in the pipeline. Hello, stage three tax cuts. A lot of these concessions and exemptions influence our behaviours or distort markets. Sometimes it's for the good, like encouraging average Australians like you and I to put some extra money towards our retirement. And sometimes it's for the bad and contributes to problems that turn into actual crises like the way the capital gains tax discount and negative gearing combine to distort the housing market to the point where entire generations will be unable to afford a home. And more often than not, the people benefiting from these tax concessions are people who honestly need them the least. I mean, do you really need to keep negatively gearing when you've reached your 12th investment property? And this in a country where a government tried to claw back billions of dollars in fictitious, made-up debts from the poorest and most vulnerable people in society, which didn't just ruin people's lives, it ended them. When a horror show like RoboDebt was introduced by the government to help balance the budget, you really have to wonder about the people having a sook because they might have to pay a bit more tax on their $3 million retirement fund. So what would the Democrats do if we were in Parliament? While there's a strong argument that this policy tweak does not go far enough, it's a good start and a much-needed change. And that was before we decided to spend over $300 billion on submarines. If we were in Parliament, we would likely encourage the government to go further with this and remove all tax breaks on earnings over $3 million. If I was representing the Democrats in Parliament, my position would be, once someone has more than $3 million saved for retirement, then congratulations, you've won retirement. Because if you retire with $3 million, there's no way you're going to be able to spend all of that before you die. Well, not on anything sensible. And at that stage, superannuation stops being about funding your retirement, and it becomes estate planning and working out the best way to leave a large amount of money to your heirs, and you don't need government-funded tax concessions to do that. As you heard in the clip from the Australia Institute, why do we need tax concessions on something that's compulsory? 
Now, all of this is in line with our policy platform on economic reform, which includes tax reform to ensure the tax system is fairer and more effective, which I've linked to in the show notes. I hope all of this has helped shed a bit of light on the complex and confusing topic of superannuation and reassured you that the changes to super the Albanese government is introducing are A, not a problem for you, and B, kind of a good thing in making superannuation tax benefits fairer to everyone. There's a lot going on in both federal and state politics, so we'll be back soon with a regular episode of the podcast. This podcast was recorded on Wadjuk Noongar lands, and I pay my respects to their traditional custodians and their elders past and present. Sovereignty never ceded. Keep the Bastards Honest is brought to you by the Australian Democrats. This episode was edited and produced by me, Alana Mitchell. If you'd like to keep in touch, you can find us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube and LinkedIn by searching for Australian Democrats and you can see what we stand for, what we value and what our policy positions are at our website at democrats.org.au. Until next time, thanks for listening.